Hello and welcome to Advanced Numbering with ID8 Apps for Revit. My name is Glynis Patterson of ID8 Software. Thanks for joining me today. In this video, we'll take a look at some of the unique challenges related to the numbering of nested pile foundation families within Revit. ID8 Apps is a collection of Revit add-on applications that are designed for the everyday Revit user. ID8 Renumber is a powerful application that's part of ID8 Apps. Renumber plays an important role in model management for our VDC and engineering customers by providing a way to efficiently document building elements such as piles and pile caps with logical numbering schemas, bringing clarity to pre-construction and construction tasks. In this video, we will review the numbering challenges that are common to pile foundation families. These families are typically required to be numbered in a way that reflects their desired construction sequencing. Additionally, there needs to be a numbering scheme that correlates the piles, which are often nested, to the caps. With ID8 Renumber, you can easily merge spatial data and data from nested families to quickly assign a meaningful numbering system to your structural pile foundations. The more refined your number, the smoother the construction process will be. Let's walk through the steps first as an overview and then take a detailed look at the process. Step one is to set up a nested pile family such that it reads our custom parent mark value from the parent family. When the cap is renumbered, the piles will automatically adopt that same number. Step two is to define a construction sequencing method. One way to assign sequencing data is through the use of spaces. In our example, each Revit space will be used to identify a concrete pour. Step three is to number the pile caps while ignoring the nested pile families. In our example, we will combine the pour number, which comes from the space, and an increment to fill out a custom parameter we will call parent mark. Step four, which is the last step, is to set the mark value for all selected foundation families. Families with nested piles will have a suffix value in addition to the previously defined parent mark value. Now, let's take a close look at how this is all done. Step one, as we said, is to set up our nested pile cap family. In this example, we're using the out-of-the-box family that ships with Revit with a few minor changes. The first is that we've created a shared parameter called parent mark. This parameter is set up both within the parent and the nested family. Next, we'll create the relationship between the piles and the cap by setting the parent mark value of each pile so that it matches the parent family. Now, if we set the value within the parent family to say five, we can see that each pile will also have the same value. The last change we've made to this family was to create another shared parameter that exists only within the nested pile family. This parameter is called pile number. Within the parent family, then, we've set the value for each pile to be either A, B, C, or D. Now that our family is set up properly, let's shift our attention to the goal of identifying the pore sequence for our pile caps. As mentioned earlier, we'll be using spaces as a way of identifying the pore sequences. We can use the built-in space rule to set up the pore numbers to meet our requirements and select each space or space tag to change the numbering as needed. Now that our pore sequence numbers are set, we'll want to use renumber to update the pile caps. We have a rule set up which will assign the concrete pour space value to the parent mark. Because this rule is space-based, we can use the auto number by view method. The renumber preview highlights that the nested families are being ignored during this process, which is how we intentionally set up our family. Notice in the schedule view how the parent mark value is now set for both the parent and nested families. The fourth and last step is to set the mark value. Our renumber rule will set the value for the mark parameter to equal the parent mark and the value for the pile prefix, if applicable. This rule can also be used the auto number by view method. The end result is that all our pile caps are now numbered according to the location, and each pile has a number that connects it to the related piles within the same pile cap. And don't forget, one of the best things about renumber is that you can renumber. If we need to change the pore sequence, for example, we can use the crossing method to restart the numbering at 001. You can use renumber to draw the detail line or draw it yourself. And we can do the same thing for the piles themselves. You can see that the results of our early numbering where we use the auto number option may not meet our needs for this project. 
Using the crossing method, we can mirror our construction sequencing requirements with far greater control. You'll need to indulge me here while I use technology to speed this up a bit. After assigning the parent mark, we can complete the last step by updating the mark value. The result is that the poor numbers are now reflected in the numbering of the pile caps and the piles. Existing ID8 Apps customers can contact support at ID8Software.com to request the sample datasets used within this video. ID8 Renumber can be used to number any element or sheet-based view. Having a logical numbering schema for your building elements is a great way to effectively communicate with your team during both design and construction. Reduce the time to completion on your next job with Renumber. We hope you've enjoyed this closer look at advanced numbering with ID8 Apps. If you have a numbering challenge you'd like us to review, just drop us a line. You can learn more about ID8 Apps and Renumber online at ID8Software.com.